Hi, this is Fred Lipman coming to you from Nova Southeastern University. This program is called Dateline Health, as you all know, and we normally talk about different uh, care of different diseases, prevention of, uh, of diseases, health procedures. But today we're going to talk about the people that we prepare to do all of that. And uh, we have a very exciting new future development here uh, out of South Florida and Nova Southeastern University, which is uh, a new Clearwater campus or Tampa Bay campus in uh, Florida. And we are going to be preparing a, a very large number of healthcare professionals. So I figured I'd bring in the deans that are responsible for it. Let me first introduce you to, and you probably know, Dr. Stanley Wilson, who is the Dean and Associate Professor at the Dr. Pallavi Patel College of Healthcare Sciences. Welcome, Dr. Wilson. Thank you. And of course, you know Dr. Elaine Wallace. Dr. Elaine Wallace is the Dean uh, of the College of uh, the Quran C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, long time, put, I guess, Favorite of yours, she's been on, this is now, I just checked, this is your fourth performance. That is correct. Dr. Wallace, this is your fourth performance for us. Uh, this is a very exciting time. Uh, and I'm going to start with you, Dr. Wallace. Well, thank you, Dr. Lippman. It's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, we were looking at a place to expand Nova Southeastern's College of Osteopathic Medicine. And through a very fortuitous meeting between Dr. Karan C. Patel and Dr. George Hanbury, our president, we found out that Dr. Patel was attempting to start his own medical school in the Clearwater area. He is a long-term resident of the Tampa Bay region. He lives in Carrollwood. Through their conversations, uh, Dr. Hanbury was able to convince him that we would be the best partner, that rather than redoing the entire show, we could offer solid academics and offer direction for the college. So Dr. Patel withdrew his application and decided to go with us, and we've been partnered with him over the last two years in this very exciting venture. We have been been working with him in the building of a very large building, 320,000 square feet. Each of our colleges will say our half of that building, approximately half, and we will be bringing a whole healthcare system and arena of students up to the Tampa Bay area. And Dr. Wilson, uh, not that you're new to the Tampa Bay region, actually, uh, I remember walking through the empty building, I believe it was in Aetna Regional Headquarters, Yes. Uh, with uh, Dr. Rick Davis, uh, your Former predecessor, predecessor. Mm -hmm. and uh, we've had a long-term relationship in that building, and nearly 10 years, correct? That is correct. So let, tell us, what, what programs do you have there now? Well, we have five programs located presently where we are, and of course we'll be moving to Clearwater when, uh, in July or August. Uh, we have a physical therapy. Um, it's a professional program, a professional occupational therapy program, a professional uh, anesthesiologist assistant program, uh, cardiovascular sonography program, and speech language pathology program in, do in those uh, areas. So five programs in what we typically call allied health areas. That's very, it's very interesting because, you know, a lot of folks uh, communicate with us about, uh, oh, I, I had a, a query the other day about uh, one of our graduates who was a gradu graduate of your program, a PA program, who was just magnificent in her presentation mm -hmm. in a dermatology office uh, working with a dermatologist. Right. And I, I think that the, the general public, the people who are watching us, often wonder uh, the nature of how, particularly in your area, the, of course, again, you alluded to it, we don't call it the College of Allied Health anymore, right. but uh, because it's, it's so broad. Yes. I mean, you have, how many programs you have? We have 29 programs. 29 programs. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Dr. Wallace has a number of programs as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and, but the impact that we have on Preparing healthcare professionals right. for not only now, but in the near future. And the, and the future is very, very close. Yes. Dr. Wallace, you know as well as anyone with the creation of new programs in, uh, alongside of the, the osteopathic medical program, how communicative uh, the 
development of a care program of how we care for individuals comes out of this collaborative healthcare environment. Yes, sir. I think for years we've always trained our professionals in medicine in silos, but we're in a different world now where the buzzword is interprofessional education. So I think we're learning more to be partners in healthcare to patients and giving each of our allied health professions, each of our medical professions, their due rights and responsibilities in patient care. So it's created a much more vibrant uh, milieu of patient care in the, in the very future as well as right now it's developing and it seems to me that what i find in not only the college of osteopathic medicine but also in dr wilson's uh, college of healthcare sciences that dr terry's vision of collaboration is here mm -hmm. it is it is it is here mm -hmm. Dr. Wilson? Yes, we, um, in mentioning what uh, Dr. Wallace has mentioned about interprofessional education, I think we have embarked on that full blood. Um, Dr. Wallace's uh, Professor Kim Valente and uh, Dr. Elizabeth Swan, who represent uh, my college, they're working very, very feverishly with uh, Dr. Patrick, Patrick Hardigan to try and again really codify this whole idea of interprofessional education. It is about looking at the, the client and the patient in more holistic approach and understanding that we feed off of each other as healthcare professionals. So as a physician, as he or she plans the care, the plan of care, it is important to have the other personnel that will be involved as part of that plan so that they feed off of each other and understand fully what each individual is going to do. That ultimately uh, yield better outcomes for our clients and our patients. And so, the next step that we're working towards is this whole idea of interprofessional practice. Now move it from just the education component to the practice component. And I think we're well on our way there. And uh, we have a few um, in instances already where we're beginning to see these things bring to come to fruition. Well, certainly with our new campus in the Tampa Bay region in Clearwater, uh, with this magnificent new facility that is going to be, I guess, the, uh, the epitome, at least at this point in time, of opportunity for young people, young and old people, well, not as old as me, but <laughs> young, younger and older uh, or second professional individuals to come together and understand the responsibilities of collaborative and interdisciplinary presentation. Dr. Wallace, you always, in all the years that I've known you, you always spoke about mind, body, and spirit. Uh, it seems to me that the educational presentations are starting to catch up with the, the verbiage of mind, body, and spirit. Am I correct? I think you're very true, Dr. Lippin. Um, I think that here in the Davie campus, Dr. Wilson's college and my college have had some experience with this. So we are the leaders in interprofessional care, and specifically in our sports medicine clinic. At our sports medicine clinic, the College of Osteopathic Medicine provides the physicians. Uh, Dr. Wilson's area provides the athletic trainers and the PTs. Uh, Dr. Karen Grosby's area provides the neuropsychologists. And so those individuals all come together in a team base. And as we retrain injuries in athletes, we see, as Dr. Wilson said, the plan laid out and how all these partners come together. So we've had the greatest experience in doing this interprofessional care, and that's occurred here probably for the last 10 years. So the paradigm that we've developed here and become very comfortable with, we hope will be the paradigm that comes up to the Tampa area and then goes into the future of healthcare. As far as the spirituality, uh, we do have counselors as well, and we have providers in our integrative medicine department that speak to the spiritual needs of the patient as well as all their physical and mental needs. And also, the, uh, with some of your new programmatic structures, for example, uh, you know, it's, we, we always used to have people come on and talk about uh, proper nutrition, you know, hydration, read labels, things of that nature. But it was over here rather than inside of the physician's compendium of presentation in their office or 
hospital practice. You're absolutely correct. We have a master's of nutrition in our college. We have a bachelor's of nutrition, and we just began, we just began a registered dietitian program. But this last year, we made nutrition a department within the College of Osteopathic Medicine for the exact reason that you're speaking of. How can you treat a patient and not have proper nutrition? So it's one of the elements that we have to think about in the holistic care of our patients. And we've done the same thing with bioinformatics or medical informatics. How can we not look at the healthcare systems when we're trying to treat patients? So I think the symbiosis is occurring. And uh, you and I speak many times. I think people of excellence are not threatened by other people of excellence. And so we all just strive for excellence in patient care. And I think that's what we have to keep our minds on and our sights on. Well, as you both know, because you're such dear colleagues, uh, and, and I, I, I will say openly fr friends, even though I'm not supposed to say that, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, the reality is, is that people, we used to have do programs. I looked at some of the older programs that recently that go back five, eight, ten years, where we would have somebody in here talking about uh, control of diets and diabetes. But yet, how, do you, how does a physician, how does a, a PA associated with a physician, mm -hmm. how does a sports medicine clinic operate when somebody is a diabetic? We've just modified our curriculum with nutrition being a thread through the entirety of the two years of our first uh, two years of education with exactly what you speak of. Uh, each of the systems that we look at, what is the diet for a diabetic? What is the diet for someone with an inflammatory disease? What is the diet for a person with heart disease? Physicians need to know about that information and then need to lean on their colleagues in nutrition who are the experts to help us with patients care. But knowledge has to come first before you even know how to use that information. So it is now a part of our educational program. And the students really demand it. They, they have come a long way as well. They really want this information as well. So some of it is from the patient need, but a lot of it is also from the student desire. Well, it's interesting because, uh, I, as you know, I, I've met with a group that's, that is, that has, I guess you could say, emanated out of the College of Osteopathic Medicine. It's a group of students that are, are uh, involved with communicating with our food purveyor here uh, about having vegetable-based you know, menus. And uh, I've, been, I, I've tried to be as supportive as I can to them to allow them to use our uh, dining rooms and otherwise to be able to throw for their mission out to other students in other schools. Your group of, of programmatic entities are so valuable yes. to the people that are watching and so valuable to the doctors that are being prepared for the care of these individuals. Why don't you talk a bit about what has happened just recently? I know, I mean, anesthesia assistants are not new to the United States, although we were only the third Right. Entity in the United States to have an accredited AA program. Right. So uh, uh, AAs um, started off, of course, with Emory University in the, in the late 60s. Okay. And of course, many states, I think we're up to about 16 states that allow them to practice, right? Mm -hmm. No, at least to be licensed in the state. But um, through the legislature in Florida, they, uh, our program uh, chair, our department chair actually, uh, Rob Wagner, worked with the legislature and they were able to allow it for the state. And um, we have the two programs in Florida, one in Tampa, which will be moving to Clearwater, and the other, of course, on this campus, thriving and doing very well and recognized for its quality, very high pass rates on the national examinations. Um, one of the beauties of our college is that we do have quite a number of different disciplines that work together. So I think that is very unique for us, but it's also, and very diverse, but a, an excellent point. We almost like our very good laboratory for this whole idea of interprofessional education. We have physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech language pathology, audiology, athletic training, exercise and sports science, respiratory therapy. And if there is a laboratory where we can best put this together, in addition to the fact that we have all the other disciplines in the health professions division, whether it be osteopathic medicine, allopathic medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, 
again, we have a unique opportunity in the health professions division and sometimes outside of the health professions division because IPE or interprofessional education is not confined only just to health. It is law can be brought in, education can be brought in. And of course, uh, Dr. Wallace mentioned earlier, we've worked with the, the College of Psychology. Uh, at the present time, we have a falls and balance clinic where that team works very well together. We have audiology, physical therapy, occupational therapy, College of Osteopathic Medicine uh, with the um, geriatrician represented there. And for many years, they have worked together as a team. A client comes in, gets evaluated and examined by the team, not by one single individual. So again, the opportunities are endless and uh, we have been fortunate in our college to have this diversity of programming that uh, gives us the opportunity to work together, but also ultimately to be able to provide the best care for our clients and our patients. Well, it sounds like that's something that I've heard from Dr. Wallace over these last decades, yeah. uh, because that's where uh, the, the whole presentation of osteopathic medicine, a lot of people don't understand that the, the training, and I'll let Dr. Wallace talk to this, the training for osteopathic medical doctors and allopathic, otherwise known as MD physicians, technically, I guess you could say knowledge base, is the same. Well, osteopathic medicine and allopathic medicine have the same base. As I tell our applicants, the body is the body. We all study the body and we understand the human body. What osteopathic medicine does is two things that are slightly different. Number one, our perspective is very holistic. We think, as you said, about mind and body and spirit with all patients at all times. And our colleagues in allopathic medicine often do as well, but that is our focus that we teach our students. The second is that we do manipulative medicine. And manipulative medicine is not done to fix joints. Manipulative medicine is done to put the body in its optimal place because osteopathic physicians believe that the body has an inherent capability to heal itself in certain ways. And therefore you want the blood vessels working, you want the drainage system working, you want everything working optimally in order to give that patient the best chance of healing. So those two components, Western medicine and the idea that the body can heal, come together in osteopathic medicine. Um, it, we have as our mission to serve the medically underserved here at our college at Nova Southeastern. And uh, we turn out 60% of our students of the 240 that graduate every year stay within the state of Florida. And of that 60% uh, of students, 45% uh, of them, I'm sorry, 45% stay in the state of Florida right. and 60% of them um, serve in underserved areas. And when you serve in underserved areas, you're often the only doctor there. So that ability to think broadly and to think holistically and to know a little bit about all the systems becomes extremely important to those individuals in rural medicine in rural Florida. Let me just st touch on that issue because it affects both your the graduates of your programs. Uh, I recently had the opportunity to talk to uh, an official of the, the new governor's office who happened to be your graduation speaker. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was saying how the word underserved is misunderstood. Underserved, and I, I know it it's, gets a little ticklish every once in a while, because underserved, a lot of people think, are certain communities that have been traditionally uh, not part of the community. They have been either minority communities or otherwise, and they're underserved populations. The truth is, that the way the state of Florida developed, real estate-wise, there are venues, uh, particularly above the I-4 corridor, by the way, mm -hmm. that an individual cannot get to a, a, an eye physician, uh, a dental practitioner in a subspecialty, sometimes with 60, 70, 80, 90 miles. 
So they're underserved. The Kaiser Family Foundation has recently surveyed the needs of the country, and Florida is the number one underserved state in this whole United States. Uh, there is currently a deficit of 11 percent physicians in the state of Florida, and those physicians are all over. Uh, by the year 2025, it's estimated that 3 million, over 3 million patients will not be served as well in the state of Florida, all over the state of Florida, and it's estimated that will affect 9 out of the 11 Medicare regions in the state of Florida. So when you speak about underserved, you're speaking about the entire state yeah. is what you're speaking of. We have approximately 913 is what the number was, physician shortage right now in the state of Florida. The second state behind us is Washington State, and they have 211. So we're by far the most underserved state in the United States. And we don't realize that when we think about it because we live in Broward County, and we have the luxury of having that type of uh, physician care. But this is also one of the reasons it's so important that Stanley's programs and my programs work together, because in many of these rural areas, they don't have OBGYNs or they don't have as many surgeons or psychiatrists. Those are the three disciplines that we have the greatest shortage in. So the teams of working together become much more important because they render the health care for a lot of the people in the state of Florida. Smack up the middle is agrarian, and that's where a lot of our underserved areas are. Well, believe it or not, we're down to the last four minutes of this show. Wow. But I, I, I want to focus on one more time because I think it's, it's a, not a challenge, but an absolute blessing to be able to create this venue in the Tampa Bay region on the Clearwater campus that includes your, prof your professional teaching environments, uh, to deal with the underserved and deal with the needs of multiplicity of, of, uh, of I would say, states in the southeast of the United States where many of our students end up providing their care. So I want to congratulate both of you, but I'd like you to just quickly tell us one more time about the, the, the beginnings of your presentation in Clearwater, Dr. Wilson? So we're very excited about Clearwater, um, or the Tampa Bay Regional Campus, as it will be called. Uh, it's a tremendous opportunity to uh, bring in students into that area and, again, educate them to serve the community in the whole Tampa Bay region. Um, new facilities, uh, magnificent in, in how they look. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, the, the opportunity to expand and do other healthcare um, education opportunities would be there. Um, we're looking forward to it, um, and uh, we think it's going to be a tremendous uh, blessing, as you rightly pointed out, an opportunity uh, for NSU in terms of that particular region to serve that community. Dr. Wallace. Dr. Lippman, we currently in Davie are the largest medical school in the state of Florida. When we fully admit our campus up in Clearwater, we will have a, a position as the third largest medical school in the United States. So Nova Southeastern is really dedicated to the health care of the people of Florida. With our allopathic school, we will be turning out approximately 450 physicians a year. So we put our money where our mouth is here at Nova Southeastern. We're dedicated to health care. We're dedicated to working with Dr. Wilson's program. We're dedicated to health of the state of Florida. Thank you very, very much for being here today. Dr. Elaine Wallace, the dean of the Karan C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. And uh, Dr. Stanley Wilson, the dean and of uh, the Pallavi Patel, who happens to be the wife of Dr. Karan Patel. And she is Dr. Pallavi Patel, uh, College of Healthcare Sciences. Thank you both. Good luck. Do, I know you're going to do great. Uh, we're so proud of you. We're so proud of NSU. And I got to say to Dr. Uh, Hanbury, our president, you did a heck of a job putting all these uh, dollars together. Uh, and uh, thank you, everyone. I hope that uh, you all understand, uh, folks, that I, I thought it was important for you to understand the depth and the breadth of our uh, healthcare education. Uh, we go well beyond that, of course, with the dental school, the pharmacy school, the optometry school, et cetera. But uh, I, I wanted you to understand what's happening up in the Tampa Bay area, and I think you got a flavor of what we're all about. NSU is a community-involved uh, uh, university. 
but most importantly, we bring excellence in healthcare, especially in education and definitely in the product that comes out of our education opportunities. So thank you once again for showing up and allowing us into your home. Remember, if you have any questions or you have any comments, there's an email address and a telephone number right here. And I always tell you to take good care of yourself, but knowing that these two deans are providing you with tremendous health care providers, take good care of yourself because they're giving you the health care providers to take good care of yourself with. So until next time, this is Fred Lippman coming to you from Nova Southeastern University. This program is called Dateline Health. See you.